Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about the gear that I use for hiking on the PCT. I've used this gear, or gear very close to it, for around 3,000 miles of hiking on the PCT now, including my 2017 southbound through hike and a section hike in 2018. And overall it's uh, worked out pretty well. So let's get started. I have this loaded up just like I would on the trail, and we'll just go through and pull things out and talk about them. So we'll start with the pack. This is the KS Ultralight KS40, and in general I think it is a good pack for hiking the PCT if your base weight is at least under 10 pounds, but you're probably going to like it better if you're closer to 8. Um, if you want to through hike with this pack, unless you're very light, um, you might have to send yourself a bigger pack for the Sierras to fit that bear can in there. Um, and if you don't want to do that, I might go with the KS50, which would probably be more appropriate size. Otherwise, it's a good pack. The construction is solid, very comfy shoulder straps, and a nice padded hip belt too. I have other things to say about this pack, but beyond the scope of this video, so let's move on to other things. In the side pockets, I'll have my water bottles. These are one liter smart water bottles. Um, I wouldn't use the, I have two of these, and I wouldn't use this uh, water setup for the whole trail. For the desert, I would have these plus two two liter water bags for a six liter capacity. And for Oregon, which has some longer carries too, I might just have one of these and then one two liter water bag for a three liter capacity. For my filter, I have the Sawyer Squeeze, which I recommend and I think works very well. As far as I can tell, I haven't gotten sick. Um, in the front pocket, I have this wind shirt. It is the Tachyon wind shirt from Mont Bell. It's very light, under two ounces, with a hood, and it's great for uh, chilly mornings and evenings. And it's also nice to throw on under your rain shell uh, for extra warmth. And I use frog togs as my rain shell, and this is great for sort of preserving the life of the frog togs. Um, because the frog togs aren't durable, they'll wear out much quicker if you're using it as a wind shirt and a rain shell. So I like to have this uh, so that my frog togs last a little longer. This is a head net. Uh, you don't need this for the whole trail. Um, probably you don't need this for most of the trail, but you're going to want to have one if you're going south in northern Washington. A lot of mosquitoes and black flies. And actually there are a lot of these annoying gnats in Southern California that'll kind of like swarm your face. And uh, I wasn't expecting that, but I ended up using a head net in the desert too. Here's just a gallon uh, freezer bag that I use uh, to hold my paper maps when I am using paper maps. I use paper maps for the whole PCT for my through hike, but I probably wouldn't do that again just because the PCT is so easy to follow. But I would have them for Northern Washington and the Sierras because the trail could be obscured by snow or your phone could die in the cold and it's just nice to have paper maps. These are my steaks. Uh, these are the Z-Pax Sonic steaks, the 6 inch ones. And they are just uh, simple Y steaks, but they hold very well and they're very light at 0.3 ounces of steak, and they're durable enough if you don't pound them in with a rock. So uh, I use eight of those. Moving on to inside the pack. On top, I have my insulated jacket, my puffy jacket. This is the Rab Xenon X. This is a synthetic jacket, and for regular three season hiking, I prefer a synthetic jacket to a down jacket. Just because if it does get cold uh, when I'm walking, um, or if I need to use this as a mid-layer, this is going to perform a lot better than a down jacket because my sweat is not going to uh, degrade the insulation. Now it's obviously not as good an active layer as fleece, and it's not, a good, not as good a rest layer as down, but it's kind of like a nice hybrid between the two, so overall I think it's a more versatile choice, and uh, that's why I go for synthetic for a uh, normal pre-season hiking. Here is my rain jacket. Um, it's just a Frog Togs ultralight jacket. I won't say too much about it um, other than I find it works perfectly well for the PCT and it's very light at uh, 5.3 ounces for a small and it's as anyone will tell you it's not durable at all but I did make it through the whole PCT with one of these. It was pretty ripped up by the end, 
but it did last the whole trail. Now these are wind pants. Uh, these are the body wrappers dance warm-up pants that you may have heard some other hikers mention. Um, I didn't use these on my through hike. I used the Montbell Versalite rain pants, and they're about the same weight, around three and a half ounces, which is really good. Um, I, I'm only I only have these in my pack now because the Montbell pants uh, just have gotten totally torn up, and I threw them away. I have another pair coming in the mail, but um, and they worked really well. They're very breathable and. Um, they're plenty waterproof for the PCT and very light for rain pants, but if I were to do it again, I would probably wear these for most of the trail and then just use the rain pants maybe for the Sierras, maybe Washington. Um, that's just because those pants are pretty fragile. They're uh, pretty thin fabric and they're expensive. These are really cheap, and so I would use these for most of the trail where you're not going to get a whole lot of rain, and it's generally pretty warm. And then only use the rain pants where you really need them. Extra pair of socks. I carry two and rotate them. These are thin, nylon, generic dress socks. Uh, they are light, breathable, very affordable, and pretty durable. Uh, I recommend giving them a try. Light, generic fleece beanie mostly wear it to sleep in. Very light liner gloves. These are, well, only one of them. I lost the other one. These are by Cyrus, and uh, they're the lightest, thinnest liner gloves they make. Those are pretty nice to have. Um, now on to my ditty bags. I have two, both quart size Ziplocs. This one is for my electronics. And in here I have first a power bank. This is the RAV Power 6700 milliamp hour uh, battery. Charges and recharges pretty quick. Um, it's good enough for like a five, maybe a six day carry. Um, but recently, now that I've been using a camera, it's uh, I kind of have to ration the power a little bit. So if you're going to use a camera or do like six or seven day carries, I might recommend something a little bigger, but generally this is fine. Two USB cords, one lightning for my phone, and one just regular for my camera and power bank. A dual port wall charger. This is a Delorme inReach, which really isn't totally necessary for the PCT because it's a pretty safe trail. There are a lot of people on it, but uh, it's nice to be able to keep in touch with uh, friends and family, and it does have the SOS function if you got into trouble. Uh, now they make the Mini, which is half the size and weight, so. I would go for that if I were in the market for one of these. Uh, two extra AAA batteries for my um, flashlight, and I know that now there are um, rechargeable ones, which I'll probably get in the future, but for now I still use uh, the AAA ones. Um, and it's important to use lithium instead of alkaline batteries because they're going to be way more cold resistant and they're going to last much longer. And this is just a little Ziploc bag that I use as my wallet for my cards and cash. Oh, and I mentioned my flashlight, but it's actually in my fanny pack. This is the Through Night TI3. Uh, it weighs like half an ounce with no batteries in it. And it's uh, pretty bright, and it works really well. And it clips to your hat. This is my other ditty bag. This is just for other miscellaneous stuff. Floss. I use it for flossing, and you can use it for... Um, thread for repairing things. In here there is Luco tape, which is the best um, sports medical tape that I'm aware of. And I put it on this uh, paper, which is silicone release paper, which is basically just what stickers come on. Um, it just keeps the adhesive fresh. I carry a little bit of that. works very well. It also works as uh, my band-aids if I get a little cut. A tiny needle for doing repairs, which to this point I've only done on my rain pants, uh, which I mentioned are not super durable. Um, this is just a little bit of duct tape uh, for basic repairs. Again, I use it on my rain pants. Duct tape works okay. It's not the best. Uh, I've heard Tenacious Tape is pretty good. I'm interested in giving that a try. This is a patch kit for my sleeping pad, which is a NeoAir X-Lite. And that does pop sometimes. I've popped it twice, um, so I've learned to be a lot more careful about uh, where I place it. But especially if you're going into cold weather, it's smart to have the patch kit. 
Um, in this little Ziploc bag, I have things that I guess could leak and I don't want to get my other stuff wet. Tiny thing of Dr. Bronner's, which I use for soap and toothpaste. Neosporin, if I get a cut and I don't want it to get infected. Small thing of hand sanitizer. And sunscreen. Tiny toothbrush. Um, little bag of meds. In here I have some Advil. Um, a couple Imodium in case you get sick and get diarrhea. And I also might carry a multivitamin in here uh, for a really long trip when you might not be eating that well. This is my compass. It's just a really simple base plate compass from Sunto. Uh, you really don't need one of these on the PCT, but it pretty much lives in my pack. It might be nice to have for like the Sierras or maybe northern Washington where the trail could be snow covered. Um, and you're using your paper maps, but otherwise it's uh, not really necessary for the PCT. Um, these two things are both for my Sawyer Squeeze. This is an extra washer, um, the thing that makes it uh, stay on your bottle and not leak. It's kind of easy to lose them, so I carry an extra one. This is a little uh, back flush adapter. You can attach this to a bottle with clean water in it and back flush the filter in case it gets clogged up. And that all goes in there. Next up is going to be my food bag. This is the Lock Sack OP Sack, which is a supposedly odor-proof bag. I won't say too much about it, other than where bear canisters are not required. I do sleep with this right next to me, and I've never had any problems. So you can um, do your own research and make your own decisions on that. Um, but it's generally considered to be safe. Just be smart, don't cook where you sleep, and uh, don't eat in your tent, and um, don't bring food that is really smelly, and uh, yeah, I think you should be fine with this. Um, this is a cold soaking container. This is the Gatorade uh, powder container. It's big enough for two ramens. Um, this is my spoon. It's just a little cutoff spoon. Uh, this one I actually broke by mistake. It's probably too small, but I have used it a couple times. It's nice to have a uh, something that resembles a meal at the end of the day, even if it's not hot. Next is my quilt. This one is pretty standard on the long distance trails. It's the Enlightened Equipment Revelation uh, 20 degree down quilt. It's pretty affordable. Uh, it's generally more affordable than the other brands. Uh, that said, it doesn't quite live up to its uh, advertised temperature rating, and there's a general consensus on that among uh, hikers. It's rated to 20 degrees, but I'm usually comfortable in it down to the mid-20s without having to add a bunch of clothing. Although, I have used it down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, um, but I was wearing a fleece with a hood, a hooded puffy, a balaclava, my rain jacket, uh, gloves, rain pants, tights, and fuzzy socks. So I had a ton of clothing on in here and a pad with an R value of 4, but that just goes to show you that if you supplement it with clothing, this quilt can get you down to some pretty cold temperatures. But honestly, um, sleeping temperature is a pretty personal thing. You just need to find out what works for you. But I like that quilt. This is a pack liner. This is just a trash compter bag trash compactor bag. Uh, now I use the Nylo Flume pack liners that you can get from lightsmith.com because they're more appropriately sized and lighter than these. The problem is you have to order them online, but these you can just get in a store, so I'll use these in a pinch. Next is going to be my shelter. This is the Z-Pack Solplex, and I think it is a great option for really the Triple Crown trails in general. It is probably the lightest single wall tent that you can buy. And up until recently, it didn't really have any competition, although Tarp Tent just released their Aeon shelter, which is gonna be a direct competitor to this. So if you're in the market for this kind of shelter, I would check out the Tarp Tent as well. But this served its purpose very well. Um, it's The zipper has broken and the floor leaks a little bit after 3,000 miles, but it did its job while it lasted. It's great rain protection, great bug protection. Uh, it does okay in the snow. It kind of collapsed a little on me, but uh, most ultralight shelters probably won't do that great in the snow. Um, anything else about this? It's probably the best you can do for an ultralight shelter uh, on the PCT. 
unless um, you want the modularity of like a tarp and an inner or a tarp and a bivy. But if you're gonna pitch your shelter every night, then uh, this is a really good option. This is my sleeping pad. It's the Neo Air X Lite women's version. And uh, for me, at just over 5'7", it works as a full length pad. Um, I chose this over the men's version because it has an R value of 3.9 versus 3.2. I like this a lot. Of course, I could be using a cut down foam pad to save weight. And I used to do that for a while, but um, when I use this, I find that I recover better at night and I hike better the next day. So, you know, that four or five ounce difference is a weight penalty that I'm personally willing to take for that better night's sleep. Um, and also it saves a lot of volume in your pack compared to a foam pad. So it's not really a better or worse thing. It's more just like a trade-offs kind of deal. Uh, so that's everything in the pack. Now I'll go through my fanny pack real quick, which is the through, uh, through pack a UL bum, about two and a half liters, and uh, it's DCF. I really like it. It holds my phone, which is an iPhone SE, which is super UL at four ounces. Um, chapstick, my uh, Swiss Army Knife Victorinox Classic. Um, it has a knife and scissors and little tweezers, and honestly that's all you need, weighs less than an ounce. Earbuds for listening to music, a mini tripod for my camera, which I'm recording with, which is the Sony A5100. I won't say too much about it, but it's a great through hiking camera um, if you want really good quality pictures and video. Um, yeah, that's it for the fanny pack. And now I want to move on to the stuff that I wear this because I think it's just as important as the stuff that's in the pack. But no one ever really weighs or talks about the stuff that they wear. It's all about that base weight. But this stuff is just as important. Uh, this is the shirt that I use for through hiking. It's a super thin long sleeve polyester shirt with a zip neck. A few brands make this, but this is the Outdoor Research uh, Echo shirt. I really like it, very highly recommended. These are my shorts. They are five inch inseam running shorts. They have pockets, which is nice. And I cut the liner out because I find that it's more comfortable to use uh, separate underwear. And these are just thin, generic polyester briefs. Uh, these are my other socks, same ones as before. This is my hat which is the Outdoor Research Sunrunner hat. And I really, really like this hat. It is great sun protection, especially in the desert. I think it's probably the most protective of any hat of this variety. It really kind of like covers your face. Um, definitely recommend. And this part clips off and you can tie it back and have it out of your way. Um, really awesome hat. Uh, sunglasses. Any pair will do. I guess polarized ones are probably better, but um, I don't know. Really, you just need some sunglasses out west. Um, these are my trekking poles. The Black Diamond Alpine Carbon Cork. Uh, I really like these. I've used these for a long time now, and I've never worried about snapping them. They're not as light as the lightest poles. They're about 7 ounces a pole when you strip them of the straps and the baskets, which I recommend because you don't really need those things. Um, yeah, they're solid poles, I don't have to worry about snapping them, and they're light enough. This is my watch, really any sports watch will do. Uh, this one happens to have a thermometer and a, an alarm clock, which are both pretty useful. And lastly, my shoes, one of the most important things. These are the Ultra uh, Superior 3.0 model. These are awesome through hiking shoes uh, for me because of the really wide toe box. And that just is great for all day comfort for really long days on the trail. Your toes can spread out. Um, they have nice, pretty aggressive tread on the bottom, which is nice in the snow. Um, and they're pretty flexible, which is great for all day comfort too. Uh, the only people I would not recommend these to are people with really narrow feet. But otherwise, I think you can't go wrong. Um, if you want a little more cushion than these, uh, then try the Lone Peak or the Temp. But otherwise, these are awesome shoes. Okay, so that's everything. 
hope this video is not too long, but I also hope that it was helpful and that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And I'll see you next time.